Hey guys, Mr. Moore just uh, getting ready to go through our second lesson of Unit 1 uh, for Geography. So I uh, wanted to just tell you guys what this is about. Um, more or less we're going to be looking at the forces on Earth that actually change the landscape. Okay, um, So we're talking volcanoes, uh, tsunamis, earthquakes, all that fun stuff. So, um, without any further ado, go ahead and get your notebooks out, get a sharpened pencil. Um, you're going to take notes from this. I'm going to try and point out some of the key words. Um, as I said before, you can take notes any way you want. You can draw pictures, all kinds of things, but make sure you're trying to get a lot of detail in there and make sure that you're taking good notes so that you're prepared when we have a quiz okay, or a test. All right, here we go. So, how was the surface of the Earth formed? Okay, since Earth was formed, the surface of the planet has been in constant motion. Land masses have shifted and moved over time. Land forms have been created and destroyed. The way Earth looks from space has changed many times because of the movement of continents. Okay, so this is where we talk about um, Pangaea. Uh, sorry, I don't have a picture of Pangaea in here, but I'm sure you guys have probably heard of it. It's kind of the thought that um, all these land masses um, at one point were all kind of together, okay? Um, based on the way they kind of fit, they almost kind of look like they form a puzzle, right? Okay, and uh, the idea or the theory is that um, over time, those planets have split apart and broken apart. So North America, South America all used to be joined with um, Europe, Africa, all that good stuff. So that's the idea, um, but we know today that um, land masses are uh, constantly changing and moving, okay? Um, so let's take a look at why. Okay, Earth's surface. A continent is a large continuous mass of land, okay? Continents are part of the Earth's crust. To me, that sounds like a key thing that I want to write down in my notes, okay? A continent is a large continuous mass of land, okay? How many continents are there? Well, there are seven continents on Earth, okay? They are Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Europe, Antarctica, and Australia, okay? So I would put all that information down in my notebook, all right? If you need to pause at any time, you can pause too. The region around the North Pole is not a continent because it is made of a huge mass of dense ice, not land, okay? So we look at that and we realize, okay, um, obviously it's not land. It doesn't fall into the same category, so it's not considered a continent, even though you can get out, walk on it, and check it out. Okay, Greenland might seem as, a, as big as a continent, but it is classified as the world's largest island. Okay, Now on maps that you look at typically, um, there's this thing called perspective. And the way that we have drawn maps make Greenland look huge, okay? Um, most maps will show it that way. Greenland is actually not that big, okay? And we'll talk more about that as we get going. But um, I just want to point that out to you guys, okay? Um, this is because Earth's crust is not a solid sheet of rock, okay? Even though you can use usually cannot feel that the land beneath you is moving all the time. Okay, Earth's surface is like many massive puzzle pieces, pushing close together and floating on a sea of boiling rock. The movement of these pieces is one of the major forces that create Earth's land features. Old mountains are worn down while new mountains grow taller. Even the continents move, okay? So basically, uh, the puzzle pieces that are our continents Okay, kind of sit on these plates that move around and they kind of float in place. Okay, now it's not like floating in water necessarily. Um, the movements aren't usually that drastic. They move just a little bit at a time, but the earth is constantly moving beneath us. We just don't feel it. Okay, it's moving that slowly. Okay, um, at least as far as the continents movement. All right, so 
Um, next up, uh, the Earth's rigid crust is made up of 16 enormous pieces called tectonic plates. Okay, those are the plates I was telling you our continents sit on. So if you look at the different continents in this picture, you can see the plates that they actually sit on. Okay, so North America sits on the North American plate. All right, South America on the South American plate. What I want to point out to you guys is some of the borders of these plates. If you look at the shapes of the plates, they're pretty similar to the continents that sit on them. Okay, that is because way beneath the ocean, okay, where that crust actually meets uh, the mantle, that's what um, kind of determines um, how those plates shift and move. And you can see that the shapes are very, very familiar to the continents that sit on them. So, um, tectonic plate movement. Okay, movement of surface plates um, changes Earth's surface features very slowly. Okay, like I said, you can't feel them moving, but they're moving. It takes millions of years for plates to move enough to create landforms. Okay, so I want you guys to understand that. These plates are moving, but in order for a landform to create, like plates bumping into each other and raising up to create mountains, okay, it takes millions of years. Okay. There's a lot of forces involved. Some land features form when plates are crushed together. At times, forces within the earth push the edge of one plate up on top of the edge of the other plate beside it. Okay, this drastic movement can create mountains, volcanoes, and deep trenches in the ocean floor. All right, a fault results when the rocks on one side or both sides of a crack in Earth's crust have been moved by forces within Earth. Okay, in this picture, we have a picture of the San Andreas Fault, okay, one of the most famous faults in the U.S., okay. It sits right on that coastline in California, but you can see it actually goes down into um, some of that landmass area, and California experiences a lot of earthquakes, okay. It's pretty normal for them to... Um, have some minor earthquakes, but every once in a while you have a major earthquake, okay? After this video, I'm going to send you guys um, a link to view on YouTube. Um, but I remember uh, at one point when I was a kid, they had a large earthquake on the San Andreas Fault um, that occurred in San Francisco. And uh, the World Series was being played at that time, and it's kind of interesting, but uh, Candlestick Park actually broke and fractured the stadium itself actually broke okay the lights went out um, and everybody's watching this on TV and you see that uh, um, there's an earthquake going on and it's pretty pretty amazing pretty intense earthquake um, pretty serious uh, incident uh, but very interesting to observe okay earthquakes are caused by plate movement along fault lines Okay, earthquakes also can be caused by the force of erupting volcanoes. Okay, so um, we have a lot of volcanoes on Earth. Some of them are active, some of them are inactive. Okay, but a lot of those earthquakes are really the uh, magma and things underneath the crust of the Earth that is coming out, okay, being forced out. And when that kind of pressure builds inside Earth, sometimes it moves these tectonic plates okay so a lot of times when the volcanoes erupt and things there's a lot of pressure and boom you get plate movement all right the ring of fire stretches for for more than 24,000 miles around the pacific ocean okay and if you look at this diagram here you'll see that ring of fire so it falls right on the west coast of the united states the north american plate Okay, and you can see uh, where California might be, where Alaska is, okay? Further down into South America, you can see there are a lot of uh, red dots there for active uh, volcanoes and major um, uh, active volcanoes that tend to move those tectonic plates, all right? And then that ring goes over to the uh, Eurasian side, okay? And you see in Japan, okay, Japan has had numerous um, volcanoes that have caused problems for them uh, specifically a few years ago they had a major volcano that caused uh, a large tsunami okay and that tsunami um, did a lot of damage and even uh, 
damaged uh, nuclear uh, power plant. So big things, this ring of fire is something that um, geologists study very closely. Um, they want to be aware of um, what volcanoes are active, when they may erupt, okay, what kind of uh, impact that's going to have on the surrounding continents. So really important stuff, really interesting, okay. Uh, the intense vibrations caused by earthquakes and erupting volcanoes can transfer energy to Earth's surface, okay. When this happens, we get tsunamis, right, okay. Um, a tsunami is a giant ocean wave caused by volcanic eruptions or movement of the earth under the ocean floor. Tsunamis have caused terrible flooding and damage to coastal areas. The forces of these mighty waves can level entire coastlines. All right. Here is a picture of a tsunami wave. Okay. That is a real picture there, guys. Okay. Um, tsunami waves can sometimes reach, I don't know, 20, 25, 30 feet in height. Um, and they can wipe out entire cities. So um, I will send a few links. Um, one will be um, some actual footage of my mom. Okay, this is an interview that my brother, Mr. Moore, who teaches at uh, County High School in the SEEPS program, he interviewed her about an earthquake that she lived through in Alaska, which was a major earthquake. Okay, so you'll get to see her talk about that earthquake. Um, how it impacted her life and how it affected people at the time. Okay, I'll also put a video so you can watch uh, about uh, tsunami. You can see how destructive that is. Um, very interesting things to see and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, this is the end of this lesson so hopefully you've got some good notes. If you need to go back, go ahead and go back because I know I went through this fairly quickly. But we're going to have our Vocabulary words added. Um, you guys can practice those vocab words. Make sure you're getting your notes. Make sure you're doing your vocab in the notebook so everything's in one place. And I will catch up with you guys later. Have fun.